Hey guys, welcome to my channel. If you find this video helpful, please like, comment and share. And don't forget to subscribe. Thank you. In this video, I am going to discuss some basic things about hypersensitivity reactions. The name itself implies that it is an exaggerated reaction of our immune system. But you have to remember that all hypersensitivity reactions are not exaggerated. So, it's actually a misnomer. The real concept is any tissue damaging immune reaction in our body is called hypersensitivity reaction. Ranging from annoying but trivial discomforts such as itching of the skin to potentially fatal diseases such as bronchial asthma or anaphylaxis. All are hypersensitivity reactions. Hypersensitivity reaction can be elicited by exogenous environmental antigens like drug, dust, pollens, foods, microbes and even various chemicals or it can be elicited by endogenous self antigens. Now types. Hypersensitivity reactions are classified into four types. Type 1, type 2, type 3 and type 4. The first three reactions involve antibody. That's why they are antibody mediated. But type 4 doesn't involve antibodies. It depends only on the cells. That's why it is called cell mediated hypersensitivity reactions. So first three reactions are antibody mediated. As they are all antibody mediated, let's see how they are different from each other. Let's start with the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. In type 1 hypersensitivity, the antigen is free antigen and also it is foreign antigen. And the antibodies involved are always IgE type and these antibodies are fixed on mast cells and basophils. As you know that mast cells are present in the connective tissue especially around the perivascular area and basophils are present in the general circulation. So in type 1 hypersensitivity, the antibody is fixed and the antigen is free. Now let's come to the type 2 hypersensitivity reaction. Here antigen is always fixed and intrinsic to the tissue on which reaction occurs. For an example, if antigen present on the RBC, the reaction will occur on the RBC only. If it is present on the glomerular basement membrane, the reaction will occur on the glomerular basement membrane only. So, in case of type 1 hypersensitivity reaction, the antigen is free and foreign, but in case of type 2, it just opposite. The antigen is fixed and intrinsic to our tissue. Here, antibodies involved are IgG and IgM type. They are free in the circulation, so they have to come to the target tissue for their reaction. So, in Type 1 hypersensitivity, the reaction always occurs on the mast cell and in type 2 hypersensitivity reaction, it always occurs on target tissue. So in these two reactions, there is no antigen antibody complex present in the general circulation. Now come to the type 3 hypersensitivity reaction. Here antigens may be exogenous or endogenous, but they are free. And the antibodies involved here are IgG or IgM type, but they are also free. So unlike other two reactions, here both antigen and antibody both are free. So they react with each other and form immune complexes which circulate in our general circulation and get deposited in various tissue and eventually cause tissue damage. That's why type 3 hypersensitivity reaction is called immune complex mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Lastly, type 4 hypersensitivity reaction. The reaction is little bit different. They don't involve any antibodies. Some immune cells like antigen presenting cells, T cells are involved in this reaction. That's why type 4 hypersensitivity is called cell mediated hypersensitivity reaction. Now I would like to mention some important hypersensitivity reactions. Type 1 hypersensitivity reactions are anaphylaxis, allergies and bronchial asthma. And type 2 hypersensitivity reactions are autoimmune hemolytic anemia and good pastor syndrome. And some important type 3 hypersensitivity reactions are SLE, 
serum sickness, arthritis reaction, and some form of glomerulonephritis. And the examples of type four hypersensitivity reactions are contact dermatitis, multiple sclerosis, type one diabetes, and tuberculosis. That's all for today. Thank you for listening, and please don't forget to subscribe.